नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू बी आई सी टॉक्स अ पॉडकास्ट बाय बैंगलोर इंटरनेशनल सेंटर ब्रिंगिंग यू कॉन्वर्जेशन दैट मूव इन फॉर्म एंड एनकरेज डिस्कॉस एंड अकमा देवी वन ऑफ अ फेमस वचनास सर्स तनु करगदवर पुष्पे अनलेस द बॉडी मेल्स यू विल नॉट एक्सेप्ट फ्लवर्स फ्रॉम दैम मन करगदवर गंधाक्षत अनलेस द हार्ट मेल्स यू विल नॉट एक्सेप्ट सैंडल अंड द सेक्रेड रईस फ्रम दैम अरी कनलेस द बॉडी मेल्स अंड द हार्ट मेल्स the awareness is not arivu kantareyada valitti opening of the inner eye is consequent upon the melting down of the body and the melting down of the mind in this episode of bic talks the specifics and varieties of bhakti in the vachana focus will be explored to show how similar and different is vachana bhakti from the rest of the bhakti movements in karnataka and the indian subcontinent this episode was originally part of a masterclass series that took place in the bic premises in late july and early august 2022 titled the paths of the hand heart and void by professor h s shivaprakash poet playwright and educator the first presentation was about an introduction to uh, vachanas in the context of uh, indian uh, Uh, bhakti and nasas is the tradition and the second one focused on one of the unique aspects of vachana tradition which is labor as soteriology labor as a spiritual practice uh, which to the best of my mind is not found in any other bhakti tradition today i'm going to talk about the path of the that was the path of the hand the culture of the hand this time i want to talk about bhakti i called it the path of the heart this is a tentative namantlicha uh, uh, now when i was thinking about uh, what to speak today i think i need to change it into something else but i'm not getting any alternative for the time being so the path of the heart is the closest approximation of what i think bhakti is in the context of kanra vachanas a uh, lot of uh, literature on bhakti available now written by indian authors and foreign authors and indian foreign authors have reflected on these traditions in terms of euro centric concepts which are not quite germane to the evolution of bhakti traditions in india one of the biggest difficulties to talk about bhakti traditions is to unlearn these uh, a uh, statement these scholars have made uh, observation these scholars have made on bhakti traditions and l- look at it afresh one of the principles i have been following in my recent forays into bhakti and spiritual tradition traditions is to listen closely to what these texts are saying instead of imposing our own uh, constructions operative constructions on it no uh, when we look at the uh, the the definition of bhakti in uh, the existing literature they fall into two uh, classifications one is to like this uh, habit of mind that uh, sanskritists have to get the meaning of any word you go to the etymology and i think this is a big trap because in english if you look at the ct onions uh, etymology dictionary the present day english word boy if you look at its etymology it actually means girl so the meaning has changed so we have to look into the usage so how bhaktas themselves define bhakti uh, that's what we should look closely at and that's what we should listen closely to than the constructions the scholars have or also the, and also the constructions uh, which have Uh, been ascribed to bhakti traditions in uh, post bhakti theologies for example I'll tell you what happened to vachana tradition in karnataka 12th century there was great efflorescence of vachanas though not all vachanakaras belong to the same that period uh, at least the major ones did 
And then this was an oral uh, uh, transmission for nearly 200 years to 300 years. And around the 15th century, this called Vachana Sangopana Yuga, age of compilation of Vachanas, uh, at the court of uh, the Salva Emperor, Prodadeva Rai, who ruled Vijayanagar, because this sect had become very popular, perhaps. Uh, he gave it the royal patron. That was the time when Vachanas were committed to writing and uh, they were uh, compiled into anthologies and commentated upon. So at this time, the scholars, who were not Bhaktas, were trying to use Vachanas as a kind of cultural capital. They used them to, for their own theological construction, which, they, which, which, which accorded with their needs. So I'm not going into that. So a lot of, uh, at this point I also made in my previous presentation, a lot of uh, things that have been written about Vachanas, both creative and critical literature, including my own Te Mahachetra, have, have been based more on the constructions of 15th century scholars than on direct insights derived from Vachana texts themselves. Now that is a challenge I am facing now to rethink the Vachanas uh, through the texts of uh, uh, Vachana poets themselves. There is another trap here. Now, the, in the official web, in the website of Vachana, Vachana Sanchai, which one of our great scholars, uh, Nagushan Swami, has uh, uh, compiled, there are about uh, 20,000 Vachanas. And he tells me that only 10% of them are authentic. Because there were a lot of interpolations in Vachanas. Later, you know, the same Vachanas were rewritten to suit the needs of appropriators at later periods. For example, terms from uh, like dharma, karma, etc. And uh, Vachanas which use long and endless uh, quotations from uh, scriptural literature, uh, these appear to be belonging to the later period and it's not difficult. It's difficult to prove because we're talking about manuscript, manuscript, manuscripts. And I don't have enough knowledge of manuscriptology to decide which comes first and which. But uh, we, if you look at the typical vachana, characteristic vachanas of Allama or uh, Basavanya Rakama Devi, we know the language and we know when there is a, 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 some kind of replication of that by somebody else that's easily detectable according to me. So these are the problems that we are facing. Uh, and plus, uh, we should remember like all bhakti texts, vachana texts are also fluent texts. There was a great uh, Gujarati uh, literary scholar, Professor Harwala Bhayani, uh, once he said that when we are dealing with uh, Indian bhakti traditions, Eurocentric scholarship is completely useless because they are looking at definitive texts Whereas in of bhakti and folk traditions, what we what we have are fluent texts. Because uh, if you, even when you look at the manuscripts, every scribe uh, brings in his own uh, innovation to the text there. So it's like one has to be a good detective to uh, guess what the original text could be about. So these are some of the problems uh, involved. So we, the, the, I'm not talking about this problem, but we have to keep them in mind. And we know that the texts we are dealing with are, are, are fluent texts and not fixed texts. And uh, some intelligent guesswork is needed when talking about or uh, translating these uh, texts. Now, today what I'm going to do is I, I've been uh, talking about bhakti as a way of the heart. I quoted... Um, uh, Utpala Acharya and uh, maybe Kulashika Radwar and others, it is basically the path of the heart. But when we say that bhakti is the path of the heart, bhakti is unconditional love for the divine, this is a very general statement. And how exactly it works out in each one of the bhakti traditions and in each one of the vachana, uh, poets, in this case vachanakaras, that needs to be looked into and that's what I'm trying to do today. Now, there is one sectarian view of bhakti. Many a times vachanakaras are known to attack followers of other sect. The Vedic tradition, not just the Vedic tradition, the folk traditions and Jainas, uh, there's nothing about against Buddhists because the Buddhists may not have been very influential in Karnataka at that time. 
ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ವೇದ ವೇದಿಸಲರು ದೇ ಕೆಟ್ಟು ವೇದಾಸ್ ಕೇಮ್ ಟು ಗ್ರೀಫ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ಕುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಸಾಧಿಸಲರು ದೇ ಕೆಟ್ಟು ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಕೇಮ್ ಟು ಗ್ರೀಫ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ಕುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡೆಮಾನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಆಗಮ ಅರಿಯದಾರದವರು ಆಗಮ ಕೇಮ್ ಟು ಗ್ರೀಫ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ಕುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಅವೇರ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಪುರಾಣ ಪೂರೈಸಲರು ದೇ ಕೆಟ್ಟು ಪುರಾಣ ಕೇಮ್ ಟು ಗ್ರೀಫ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ಕುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ದ ರಿಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೂ ಎವರ್ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಫಾಲೋ ದ ಪಾತ್ ಆಫ್ ಶರಣಾಸ್ ದ ಶರಣಾಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಭಕ್ತಾಸ್ ಹೂ ಎವರ್ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಫಾಲೋ ದ ಪಾತ್ ಅನ್ ಔಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ ದ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ಟರ್ಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಇಮ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಭವಿ ಸೊ ಟೈಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ವಚನಕಾರ ಭವಿ ಸಂಗವ ಮಾಡಲಾರದು ಅದು ಭವಿ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೀಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ವೇದಿಕ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಆಗಮಿಕ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಬಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಶೈವಾಸ್ ಹೂ ಗೋ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಶಿವಲಿಂಗ ಇನ್ ದ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಸ್ಥಾವರ್ ಲಿಂಗಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಲಿಮಿಟಿಂಗ್ ವ್ಯೂ ಆಫ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಫೈಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ವಚನಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಎವೆಂಚುಲಿ ಲೀಸ್ ಟು militancy in uh, devotional sects this happened to vaishnavism at some point of time something called veera vaishnavism came into being similarly the militant shaivism emerged more or less around this uh, age of compilation and the legends about one eko rami tande and adaya who went around destroying the jaina places of worship and uh, slaughtering jainas the legends about it and uh, that was the period of 15th and 16th century when uh, lots of uh, jaina lay people started committing uh, what is called uh, sallekha navrata or pandita marana the wise about with professor shetter has written two fantastic books and shetter also surmises that uh, prolific proliferation of sallekha navratas and and uh, uh, this uh, voluntary uh, death rituals of jainas uh, was occasioned by uh, the the onslaught of militant uh, uh, virashiva crusaders so this element is already there in vachanas these days when they talk about vachanas they soon only talk about good things and they says oh, you have uh, uh, universal this that and so on but uh, we should look into all the dimensions of vachanas and if one looks at the militant stand taken by the lingayat community in the recent past uh, in case of many controversial books including my own it's not that sharana world view was all uh, completely benevolent in those days suddenly turned uh, uh, militant there, there are seeds in the vachana text in there and we have to look at them objectively so this bhakta and bhavi this uh, dividing line is an important uh, element of vachana bhakti and which is the nyaro understanding of bhakti so bhavi is the opposite of sharana and who is a bhavi time and again they tell us parasati paradana who ever appropriates the wealth of another woman another person woman of another person is a bhavi but interesting thing is this bhakta bhavi uh, uh, this uh, binary is transcended by the most catholic of uh, vachankaras with greatest catholicity for example allama ultimately upholds not the ideal of a bhakta but of a bhavi now there are two kinds of uh, approaches to understanding of bhakti bhakti is is not the surrender of the heart yes but bhakti is something physical and the experience of bhakti is similar to the erotic experience so there is one of the one of the uh, words which is uh, very fre- frequently used in, uh, uh, in in the description of bhakti is doing it with the whole of the body with the whole of the mind with the whole of the cell basavanna puts it one of his vachanas maduvudu maduvudu manamutti maduvudu maduvudu tani mutti now when uh, when it comes to uh, vachana poets of the artisan or uh, laboring class making refers to the act of labor here bhakti itself is a kind of action and it has to be done with the uh, body 
uh, I, and here is this uh, vachana bai mana ba, mana beresidalli tanu keragadiddare so vachana bai basavanna it's a very beautiful word it's not yet been translated i'm giving you a rough and ready translation i thought i should uh, uh, dig out new vachanas instead of uh, uh, using the ones i've already translated mana mana beresidalli tanu keragidde is referring to human love when the hearts meet tanu karagide iddare then the bodies should melt unless the bodies melt sonkinalli pulakangalu hora hommadiddare through touch if that thrilling experience of thrill does not happen kandagalashru jalangalu suriyadiddare it's like meeting of lovers when they look at each other their eyes are filled with tears unless tears flow nurivalli gadgadangalu ponmadiddare when they speak to each other they can't speak clearly they so that something they feel some constriction in the throat so this speak in a uh, not 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 uh, very fluently unless this happens kurva sangma devara bhakti ke chinna yennalli village anurambaka see only when you have these things you are this is a sign that you are the uh, bhakta akurol sangama because i don't have them i am not one and akama devi one of her famous vachanas says tanu karagadavaralli pushpavanolle yen unless the body melts you will not accept flowers from them mana karagadavaralli gandhakshatayanolle yen unless the heart melts you will not accept sandals and the, the sacred rice from them arivu kantare unless the body melts and the heart melts the awareness is not arivu kantareyadavalitti opening of the inner eye is consequent upon the melting down of the body and the melting down of the mind so another vachana by basavanna the body itself is transformed into an image of bhakti yanna kayava dandigaya maadeya he is talking about the body as a loot he says make my body the beam of the loot yanna kayava dandigaya maadeya yanna narava tantiya maadeya make my nerves into the strings yanna berala kaddiya maadeya make my fingers into the striker urdalotti badisu clasp this loot your heart bhakti saragava barisayya kuru through that you play 32 ragas because um, probably in those days only 32 ragas of music uh, were famous is talking about 32 ragas so it, uh, the body itself becomes that loot which is a symbol of bhakti so the transformation of the body into the attitude of bhakti and the gestures of bhakti like tears flowing and uh, words failing and the uh, body melting and the uh, heart melting etc is no bhakti this is another perception of bhakti in vachanas one is the sectarian perception where bhakti uh, is uh, the preserve of their own sect and uh, followers of all other sects are called uh, bhavis but this is a more subjective and internal dimension of bhakti and this bhakti they tell us is not easy sometimes it's not just love it's also struggle basona says one of his vachanas jambu dweepa nava khanda prutvi yorage koluven emba bhashe devanadu geluven enda bhashe bhaktanadu bhakti emba kooralagane hiridu sad bhaktaru kagaddaru kaana chabukurila sagama deva 
He says in Jambudvipa Navakanda Prutvi, in those days the, the, the idea of cosmos was the cosmos consisted of Jambudvipa and there were nine continents, they say, mythological uh, uh, concept of uh, geography. The Aradari Navashe, listen to the language of two people. Koluvenamba Bashe Devanadu, I will kill you. This is the language of God. Geluvenamba Bashe Bhaktan, but I will win. This is the language of the Bhakta. Bhaktiyamba Kura Ladane Hridu, the sharp sword of bhakti in hand. He compares bhakti to a weapon. On the one hand, it's love, self-negating kind of love. Here is struggle. Bhakti is a sharp blade of bhakti. The true devotees can conquer you, O Kudal Sangamadeva. This language of struggle, Akkamadeva was known for uh, vachanas which um, uh, are um, lyrical, which is an uh, example of Madhurya Bhakti, uh, devotional love. Uh, she also sometimes speaks like a fighting Bhakta. She says in one of her vachanas, uh, the, the, she's talking to Basavana, she's describing her experience of bhakti. She says, Shiva is the enemy of lust, Kamari, according to mythology. So the greatest conqueror is the conqueror of lust. He is that. But I am going to conquer it. He, the, she deliberately used the word Kamari, the conqueror of the greatest uh, uh, biological force. So I'll conquer this conqueror of lust. Kamariya. Gelin Basava. I've already conquered him, O Basava, through your grace. Soma Dharana Hiritappe no Basava Ninadeinda. He's one whose deck is crowned with the moon. And I'm going to capture him and bring him to you. So don't think I'm a woman. Namadalli hengu semba hesaradhe no. What if I'm called a woman? I'm a woman only in name. Bhavisalogandu rupu. If you understand me from within, intuitively, I am a he. Even that is because of your grace. Ati kani channa mallikaj nange todarikki. First she said channa mallikaj is kamari, enemy of kama. Now she says ati kami. He is a very licentious person. So I will set an obstacle to, to this uh, uh, lascivious, uh, this lech. And then, Yaraduvariyade, I'll mate with him uh, 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 and uh, overcoming duality in that sense, in an undivided way, Basavani Makrapayanta. So the culmination is an act of love, act of intimate love, where two bodies melt into one, but the path to arrive at this kind of Union is full of struggle. So bhakti is both the battleground and also the bed of union for a bhakta. And Basavan also talks about this. In the Tvachana he talks about unless these things happen. Again he also talks about the struggle in, involved in bhakti. Elsewhere he says, bhakti ambuda madabharadaya Bhakti is not an easy thing. It 
like a seesaw it cuts you while going and coming so what we should focus on what i want to emphasize is bhakti is not something easy it's not just an act of faith now we are talking about different kind of bhakti today i don't want to talk about it you just believe bhakti is not faith and faith bhakti is experiential for ramakrishna paramahamsa kali was not an object of faith kali was part of his experience bhakti is experiencing the divine through intense love and intense love is inseparable from intense hate because human mind always acts between opposites in the buddhist meditation we are taught that uh, there are two impulses which disturb a meditator one is kamachanda which is lust and passion the other is vyapa the opposite antagonism hatred so in intense act of love there is uh, this uh, uh, complexity and which we find in the language of vachanas and this militant bhakti that we discover in vachanas this militancy is not with the other the militancy against the other is based on the concept of bhakta and bhavi but this militancy that in the vachanas i said is not a struggle with others but the struggle with oneself uh perhaps historians should have a last word about it this uh, veera bhakti concept came to our uh, indian uh, uh, bhakti schools maybe because of the influence of uh, islamic concept of jihad uh, because we don't see this uh, uh, prior to 8th century but about jihad also there are two approaches to it one is the political approach to consider jihad uh, as a crusade against uh, the other uh, there is a sufi concept of jihad where the fight is with yourself not with others so conquering the enemy within so uh, this element of bhakti subjective aspect of bhakti is different from the social aspect of uh, this uh, uh, militancy uh, they have to kept separate but both of them are present in the vachanas and now next thing is bhakti is the path and people i've already told you that you we can't we, we can't afford to confuse this kind of unconditional love or obsession with the divine with uh, other kinds of matlabi uh, bhakti temple going bhakti and uh, ritual uh, uh, performing bhakti uh, where uh, bhakti is always uh, for a for a for a prize for a boon Uh, in lot of uh, uh, devotional uh, uh, hymns we find this what is called phalashruti uh, uh, what are the things uh, boons you are going to get if you chant these uh, uh, verses if you chant uh, uh, one time you'll get all this two times a day you get all this and three times a day you get all this maybe people get it but this is masindri bhakti and this is not the kind of bhaktas we are talking my i i, I, I explain this the difference to you in my first lecture by giving the example from andars uh, uh, tiruppavai uh, but there is a point when bhakti transcends bhakti even in other traditions the dualism between the bhakta and the divine ultimately the two merge into one uh, in sufi uh, tradition uh, this uh, there's a uh, legend about um, mansur halaj to who uh, 
in divine ecstasy he started screaming anal haq anal haq anal haq i am allah and i am allah and he was persecuted and there's another uh, story connected with this uh, his sister uh, rabia basri was a great uh, mystic according to this legend and every day she used to partake of a divine uh, uh, wine which only enlightened people can uh, withstand uh he caught her uh, uh, sipping this wine he said give it to me he says what is this this takes you into great ecstasy he says give it me i want to taste it she said no you can't stand it you will come to uh, ruin yourself if you if you, you don't have the energy to stand it so he insisted and uh, at, at, at last he agreed to give him a drop of it as soon as he the drank one drop of it suddenly went into the ecstasy and went out into the stream uh, uh, street screaming ala 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 so he was persecuted so the path of bhakti is not difficult and it is not only a path of self negation sometimes it's also the path of self destruction uh, because in that state even uh, german mystic uh, mr ekehart uh, says in one of his uh, uh, sayings i and my father are one even in a dualistic religion like christianity he says i and my father are one so the same kind of union uh, uh, this vachana poets also uh, attain at the end of their long journey a journey full of struggles and full of uh, uh, the pangs of separation and and and, and the thrills of uh, momentary union and it has the same follows the same course as human love intense human love uh, but the object of this love is different and the difficulty of falling in love with somebody who is not embodied is an important aspect of vachana bhakti for example in uh, vaishnava bhakti in saguna bhakti uh, krishna has very palpable attributes a lot of bhajans uh, you know uh, devotional uh, songs to krishna i talk about it kasturi tilakam lalata palake vakshastale kaustubam nasag hari chandanam karatale venum kare kanganam gopasti parivestitam vijayate govinda choodamanim vijayate gopala choodamanim so he is described in the last uh, section uh, the pa- uh, chapter of uh, sri narayaniyam by narayana bhattapadri the narayaniyam is a narayaniyam is a great devotional sanskrit as written in kerala which is a, a condensed translation of shrimad bhagavatam uh, the uh, one of the most important vaishnavic bhakti texts and is very intense uh, uh, description of krishna very poetic immensely poetic The, the the description of the image of kuruvairappan from the uh, head to foot intense so there is a concrete representation of deity there but in vachanas because the tamil bhakti is the first saguna bhakti uh, the bhakti of sharana is the first nirguna bhakti in india the shiva here is for the most part formless and even if he has form he does not have the anthropomorphic form in one of his vachanas was jagada gala migaya gala migila gala nimma gala wide wide as the earth and wider than the 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 all the worlds so pata hari din datta tanimma shri charana your feet go further down than the under worlds brahmand din datta tanimma shri makuta your crown is further above the uh, the cosmic egg agamya agochara apratima lingave agamya you are unreachable agochara you are unperceivable yanna krastala but how come that you became my slave so how the the immensity cosmic immensity becomes something i can hold in my hand and in another vachana there is a vachana karak gajesh masanaiya he said in one one of his vachanas 
you uh, girls of the world are able to uh, you attain joy by uh, making love to your uh, uh, boyfriends uh, in your dreams even when they are not around but i can't even do that because i haven't even seen my boyfriend i don't know how he looks so this agony of falling in love with somebody who is disembodied akama devi also said bhav bhavilla da bhaya villa da gandaninga nolide nawa he is the husband without birth without mass without face else he says uh, the husband without the head marries the uh, bride the bride without uh, without her legs so this marriage of between the bhakta and sharana and the formless divine is sometimes invoked in uh, a paradoxical language allama prabhu also talks about allama prabhu is not predominantly a bhakta kandala nureda hutta nureda bhandana va ati bhandana va kandare nurisare maya devi so kandala nureda kandala means the vessel the the, the, the pot uh but uh, our vachana scholars were unable to uh, find out the meaning of this word and uh, uh, one uh, great scholar professor aramitra he looked found the meaning of this word in the malayalam dictionary in malayalam dictionary kandalu means the vagina kandala nodeda and this is the meaning is confirmed by the next sentence hutta nurida he broke the penis hutta nurida bhandana vaati bhandana is this kind of love he makes and this love is very akamadeva says appire asthiralu muriyuvantire beku when em, while embracing the bones should be pulverized yachare garita kanadantire beku and when you shoot the arrow in love and even that uh, you know whatever uh, thing you have at the edge of that i don't know the the gari the feather that is tied to the arrow even that should go in so is that kind of intense love so bhakti works through the body like the approach of tantras and yoga also works through the body bhakti also works through the body and it trans seeks to transform the body is body centric but the body is transformed to something so this is a very important thing that we've seen uh, vachanas and now so i said bhavi is supposed to be the opposite of bhakta but allama prabhu reverses this you know as vachanas he says bettakke chariyadare eno hodisuvarayya if mountains feel the cold with what will they cover them bailu batta iddare yen urisuvarayya when void is naked what do they cover it with bhaktana bhaviya adena upasivisuvarayya if the bhakta becomes a bhavi to what what similes should i find for it and a lot of scholars they say that allama pro is talking about uh, how bad it is to be a bhavi you have to be a bhakta but look at the metaphors pallam pro speaks the language of paradoxes he says bhakta should ultimately become free from bhakti should again become a bhavi so bhaktanu bhavi are that process of bhakta becoming bhavi is similar to the mountains feeling the cold there is no blank blank to cover it or space being naked you don't say oh shame and you try to uh, cover the shame of the space with a piece of uh, cloth so bhakti has to go beyond uh, bhakti uh nara vachana allama pro says the goal is not to be a bhakta the goal of a bhakta is to become a bhavi elsewhere it says 
ಕುರುಹ ನಿಡಿದು ಕುರುಹಗಲ್ಲ ಬದಲಡೆ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಎ ಭಕ್ತ ಐ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಇಷ್ಟ ದೇವತ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮಿಸ್ಟ ದೇವತ ಸಮ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ರಿಚುವಲ್ ಸಮ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ನೇಮ್ ಇಮೇಜ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಐ ಸೆ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟು ಬಿಕಮ್ ಲಿಬರೇಟೆಡ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ಕುರುಹ ನಿಡಿದು ಕುರುಹ ಬದ ಬೈ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ದೀಸ್ ಬೈ 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 ಫೋಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ symbol or sign you have to transcend the symbol and um, he says in one of his white bhavanas bhavi bhavi bija vrukshada phala dolage bhakti bija vruksha pallavasittu the seed of bhakti is bhavi hood and thus that one has to become a bhakta one is a bhavi to start with ಭಕ್ತಿ ಬೀಜ ವೃಕ್ಷದ ಫಲದೊಳಗೆ ಶರಣ ಬೀಜ ವೃಕ್ಷ ಪಲ್ಲವಿಸಿತ್ತು ಐ ಮೀನ್ ದಟ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ದಿ ಶರಣ ಹುಟ್ ದ ಸ್ಪೆಸಿಫಿಕ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ದಟ್ ವಚನ ಪೋಯಿಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಕೇಮ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಸೀಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಶರಣ ಬೀಜದ ಪಕ್ಷ ವೃಕ್ಷದ ಫಲದೊಳಗೆ ಕುಲನಾಶಕ ಶರಣ ಒಂದು ಮುಂದೆ ಬಸುರಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂದ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೀಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಶರಣ the came another who is the destroyer of his own clan kulanashaka bandu bandu badagakke tanna kulakke taane mariyada he became the ruin of his own clan his own community bhavi bhakta bhavi bija vaksha tampu nalada bittu so by going beyond the cooling shadow shadow shade of bhakta hood and bhavi hood kulidalliye bari bariye sharana the bayala the sharana the true sharana turned into void wherever he was wherever he was sitting one doesn't need to be a bhakta one doesn't need to be a bhavi one has to go beyond these binaries and uh, in the next lecture i'm going to talk about this what it, what it feels like to go beyond and live beyond uh, these binaries uh, on the basis of uh, some more vachana text but before i conclude so in uh, i said the uh, north indian bhakti scholars have talked about two kinds of bhakti saguna bhakti and nirguna bhakti saguna bhakti where the divine has an anthropomorphic form and nirguna bhakti where the divine does not have the anthropomorphic form and uh, the example of saguna bhakti in hindi is goswami tulsidas and uh, kabir ravidas dadu dayal their presentators nirguna bhakti uh, so uh, the, this is a question of sakara and nirakara the form and the formless uh, ultimate spiritual experience is beyond both allama puts it very beautifully and this will be a concluding vachana for today's lecture and this will be uh, a trial of a uh, trailer of the next uh, lecture uh, he says sakara nirakarangaram bevadu swarupagadu both form and formless or abstractions or constructions one do ahwana when you imagine in the anthropomorphic form which are was the form the form of light in the form of cross whichever form you want this is invocation on the ahwana and when you go beyond this form into the formless one do visarjana so Okay, there. Okay. These are the hazards of losing weight, you know, the rings are losing. So, one do visarjana, the other is dissolution. One do vyakula, the form is ultimately sorrow. because the joy of union soon brings the pangs of separation vyakula so long as in the domain of form you can't escape the 
uh, uh, dualism of agony and ecstasy. One is Nirakula, the other is Nirakula. It has no uh, uh, limitations. But he says, Ubaya Kura Rahita Nama Gogeshwaranu. And Gogeshwara, our Lord, is beyond both these clans of the form and the formless. So there's another saying among the Vachana poets, Bayala Alayava Maduvanu Bhakta. That Bhakta is somebody who gives shape, a form. Is the Alayava means temple? It doesn't mean temple because Vachana poets didn't believe in the temple. Is Bhakta. Alayava Bayalu Maduvanu Jangama. Jangama was not a bhakta who's, uh, who's uh, he, he, he can't say his knowledge is, is something like wisdom, the wise one, uh, the adept is somebody who can dissolve form into nothing. The artisan, Vachanapas, who look at the act of labor as a, 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 a part of um, uh, liberation, as, as, as a soteriology, they transcend their uh, uh, ego through labor, dissolve the ego, and bhaktas dissolve it through intense love. When I and you become one and both are negated, and the other is the approach to go from void to void to void. You don't even need to break the body to know that it's empty. Uh, it's rather uh, Devarada Simeya, the Dasimeya, the Viva says in one of the Vishnas, Ghatava Nore, Ditava Nore Leke. Why should we break the body to see the truth of word inside? Ah, Ghatave, Ditave Nore Leke, Solidi. Why not realize that the body itself is empty? And Kabir puts it in a different way. Jal me kumb kumb me jal bahar bhi tarpani, thote kumb jal jhali samana yeh tatkatyo gyani. So there is pot. Water is the symbol of emptiness here. Water. If you dip the pot in water, uh, there is water inside and water outside. If the pot breaks, water is still the water. This is as far as words can approach, approximate the void that our great mystics are talking about. Thank you for staying on for the full conversation. If you like what we do, please share it with your friends and family. You can also leave us a review or rating on iTunes and Apple Podcasts. The crew that makes these podcasts possible is Gaurav Krishna on sound supervision and production with support from S. Saranaraj and Raghavendra Tenkaila. Artwork and design is by Chandni Venkataraman of Criss Cross Design Studio. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel on your favorite podcast platform. It can also be accessed on our website, bangaloreinternationalcenter.org. Do follow us on Instagram for updates on all our programming. This is Lekha Naidu signing off on behalf of everyone at BIC.